Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, on Thursday, the Supreme Court announced it will wade into the controversy over whether for-profit corporations must cover birth control and the health insurance they provide for their employees. The Obama administration argues that under the Affordable Care Act, an employee's decision to use her health coverage to pay for a particular service cannot be attributed to her employer. It's also said contraceptive coverage is key to ensuring both public health and women's equality. In one of two cases the court will hear, known as the Conestoga Wood case, a Mennonite furniture business wants the court to determine whether the birth control requirement violates both the Religious Freedom and Restoration Act and the company's rights under the First Amendment. The court will also hear here, a case brought by Hobby Lobby, a chain of arts and craft stores with more than 13,000 employees. We're joined right now by Bridget Amiri. She's a senior staff attorney with the ACLU Reproductive Freedom Project. She's been following these issues closely. It's good to have you with us. Can you just lay out the significance of the court taking up this case? Sure. I think uh, the case is very significant for several reasons. I think this is the first time that we'll have the Supreme Court decide whether religious liberty uh, rights can be used to trump anti-discrimination laws. And uh, we, uh, the ACLU, have been filing briefs in this case arguing that uh, those religious liberty rights cannot trump anti discrimination law, as the companies are arguing here. Now, at the heart of this is whether a corporation uh, uh, is, again, a person in terms of religious freedom now, but isn't the whole idea of creating a corporation that you uh, create an entity separate from you as an individual? Well, certainly one of the cases, one of the questions in the cases is whether a corporation is a person under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. And uh, the courts uh, in the in the appeals courts have been split on this issue. And so it's also important that the court, uh, the high court is going to resolve this issue. Uh, but certainly that's one of the big issues in this case. Uh, the ACLU has argued that even if uh, a corporation could have religious liberty rights, uh, those corporations cannot invoke their religious beliefs uh, to take away a benefit from their female employees. What does this mean for the Affordable Care Act? Well, for the larger Affordable Care Act, I'm not sure exactly how far the repercussions will be felt. Certainly, if uh, the government is successful in the Supreme Court, um, that will be tremendous, um, not just for the millions of women who stand to benefit from uh, the contraceptive rule coverage, but um, also will put an end to any sort of argument that corporations could use their religious beliefs to try to carve out other services, too, that they might disagree with. What if an employer didn't like the fact that you had AIDS, and so they said, I'm not going to cover AIDS drugs? That's uh, what one of the very uh, real possibilities uh, that if the, if the court doesn't side with the government here, or if uh, Jehovah's Witness owns a company and they decide not to cover blood transfusions, uh, there's a long line of uh, very uh, dangerous precedent, um, all of which would undermine the Affordable Care Act's uh, goal of ensuring health care for all Americans. Let's go quickly to the Hobby Lobby founder and CEO, David Green, who challenged the law. This is the case that's going to the Supreme Court talking about his company's position in a video posted online. The beliefs that we've had, that we have grown up with all our lives, um, are um, convictions that we have that we live by personally. Um, and as we have ran our business, we feel the obligation or the desire that we want to use those same principles within our business. It would not be consistent for us to live one way at home and then accept a different way at work. We do everything we possibly can to be a help to our employees of how that they can uh, structure their life based on biblical principles. It's not something that's forced on anybody, but it's there for them if they would like. Bridget and Mary, if you could respond. Sure, absolutely. Everyone is entitled to their own religious beliefs and are um, free to worship in whatever way that they choose. But when you decide to open a business and employ 13,000 employees, as Hobby Lobby does, uh, then you don't have the right to use your, those religious beliefs to take away a benefit from those employees, just as you wouldn't have a right to discriminate, them, uh, discriminate against them based on their race or their sex or their sexual orientation. <coughs> Now, the, um, you mentioned before the contradictory appeals court decisions. What, uh, in those uh, two decisions, what did the courts rule each way? Uh, they are split in their determination. So the Hobby Lobby Court out of the Tenth Circuit held that uh, corporations are persons under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, and also that uh, Hobby Lobby was likely to fully succeed on the merits of their case um, by showing that their religion was burdened and there was no compelling government interest to justify that burden. Uh, the Conestoga Wood case found the opposite in answering the threshold question that corporations are not people capable of exercising religious liberty rights.
What's your prediction? It's really hard to say. We obviously don't know what the Supreme Court does any time they uh, take a case. Uh, we hope that the Supreme Court uh, will follow a long line of cases um, uh, over the last several decades that have held that you can't use religious liberty uh, to trump anti-discrimination laws. Well, we want to thank you for being with us, Bridget Amiri, senior staff attorney with the ACLU Reproductive Freedom Project. And that